What's up guys, Jimmy from Mountain Bike Travel Eat here again. Gonna do a quick tutorial on how to switch over your rear tubeless tire. I currently have a Maxxis Minion DHR on the back of my Santa Cruz Bronson. I'm gonna switch that over to the Aggressor, try something new. So the Aggressor comes in two different forms. There is the single ply EXO casing, which is about 890 grams. And then at 1050 grams, there is the heavier double down they call it. So this is the double down so it does have uh, double ply walls on it. It's basically two layers of rubber with a vulcanized layer of buttle or butyl rubber in between so it makes it much stronger. Uh, in New England here we have a ton of rocks and stuff so constantly tearing up the sidewall. So the aggressor is a really nice tire. Uh, the knobs are a little smaller than the DHR but I think I'll be just fine. On the outside, the treads are a little softer, so they're a softer compound. They call this a dual compound construction. Softer for the outer knobs and then harder compound for the inner knobs. Now that's basically going to give you a lot more traction without the inner knobs wearing too much and then some real nice bite on those outer treads. Really interested to see how this thing runs, but let's go ahead and throw it on there and see what we can do. So you only need a few things to get started here. Obviously you need your old tire and your bike available. You then need your new tire, make sure it's the right size. I run a 2.3 on my Bronson. Some guys like to run 2.5 or something a little bigger. Um, you need some tire sealant. I prefer the orange seal. Uh, this is the endurance. It's said to last a little longer. This stuff is a little more fiscus than the stands and it's just got a lot better reviews. So I'm gonna give this a shot over the stands. The sealant is also pretty cool. It comes with a little injector knob if you have a removable core um, for your valve stem. Mine is not. It also comes with this little bad boy. So basically all you do is if you have a removable core, you can take this, stick it into the core, and see how much of the sealant is left in your tire. A lot of the times you just have to guess or spin it around. Uh, so a cool little feature there. Then you're going to need some tire levers. Some tire levers here just in case your tire won't come off. You obviously need a bike pump to pump up the tire. And then I just have a sponge with some warm soapy water. So this is going to help the bead of the tire set in place. I don't have a compressor. I'm doing it with a regular pump. So you want to make sure that bead slides right into place. So the first thing you want to do here obviously is to remove your rear wheel. First thing we're going to do of course is to remove our valve stem. I'm going to open this right up and we're going to let all that nice stinky air out of there. It's going to smell like, uh, you know, something like rotten fish and, and stands. Once you have this down low enough, all you're going to do is push around the edges here. That's going to break the seal off. Now just remember that there's probably still a bunch of stands left in the bottom of your tire. So as you're taking this off, be careful not to send stands spewing all over the place. I'm just going to take a tire lever. My tires are pretty beat up, so it should slide right off there. We're going to open this all the way up. A little bit of stands oozing out there. I had refilled mine recently, so as you can see, there's a pool of stands in the bottom of the tire there. So I'm going to take this and just dump this out somewhere safe. Alright, so I've got my tube all wiped out there. All we're going to do now is break the bead on the other side. It should pop right out. And you should be able to take your tire right off your rim there. Dispose of that. You just want to make sure that you go through, really wipe this all out. I don't want to have any of the old stuff in there. It's also a good opportunity to just give your, your rim a nice clean. All right, now we got that all taken care of. So the next step here is going to be figuring out which way that you want your rotation to go. So on many tires, there's going to be an arrow. You can see that there. It tells you which way the rotation wants to go, so you want to make sure that obviously the rotation is going towards the front of the bike. 
So for me, my wheel goes on the bike this way, of course it's upside down, but I want the rotation to go this way. We'll start by pressing on one side of the tire here. Should be able to just fold that right over. So we've got one side on there. We want to make sure that our valve cap is nice and secure here. So you basically just want to tighten this little bolt up top, make sure that's nice and secure. That's good to go. All right, so now we have one side of the tire on, we have one side open. What I'm going to do to make this a little easier because it's a brand new tire, is I'm just going to tape a little bit of this nice soapy water here with my sponge. And all I'm going to do is run it inside along this bead. Now what this is going to do is this is going to make it so that when your tire is trying to set into the rim, it's going to have this nice slippery soap on there so hopefully it sets a little easier. I find that with new tires it's a bit more difficult so we're just going to run a little bit of this soapier water on both sides. We can obviously wipe off and clean up our mess after. Okay, so now what we want to do, we're going to start feeding this on from the top. So we'll just start here and we'll start pressing the tire on both sides. to the bottom. And we want to leave this hole here. So what this hole is going to do is that's going to allow us to pour in our sealant to make sure that when we seal up the tire everything sits nice and obviously no air comes out. So we leave that little hole there. We have our lovely sealant here. They say two to three ounces. This is a four ounce bottle. I'm just going to throw the whole thing in there. and should be fine. But all we're going to do is literally just pour this sealant right into the bottom. A little mess there, but no big deal. Now, this part you got to be careful. So we're going to slowly rotate the wheel, trying to keep all that sealant at the bottom. So now our valve sims at the bottom. We have the open portion up top, and we're just going to want to close up the rest of the wheel. And this might be a little tight, you can use levers, you don't have to. It does make life a little easier. Make sure you don't push down too hard on the wheel, because remember there is all that fluid down there. Now one of the things, if it seems a little tough in the beginning to set the tire, what you want to do, literally just run your finger around the whole thing. And make sure that the tire is actually sitting in the center of the rim instead of in the bead. If it's in the bead, you're not going to have as much space to pop the tire on. It's going to make your life a bit more difficult. But there we go. Now we're going to try to pump this bad boy up. Again, I'm not using a compressor. I'm using a regular foot pump. So hopefully this will work. Usually it does. Usually it's not that big of a deal. Let's give it a shot. All right, so we have our tire on the ground. You want to make sure that your rest of valve is at the top. Take our pump here, lock that on. We're just going to pump with all our might. Nice and fast. You can hear the tire popping into place. Okay, so the trouble I'm having right now is that one side of my tire isn't seating properly, so since I'm using a foot pump, it's not blasting pressure into there. Basically, I'm going to have to troubleshoot, so what I'm going to do is let a bunch of the air back out, look at the sides where it's not setting, which are both of the sides here, and then I'm going to take... Pour my soapy water here. I'm just going to get a bunch of that inside that bead. Lube it up extra nice on both sides. And hopefully that nice slippery soap will allow it to pop in place.
All right, so I'm having some serious issues getting this thing set. So I'm going to do what they say you shouldn't do. I'm actually going to use a CO2 and try to blast this thing onto the rim. Brand new tire again, so it's kind of a pain, but let's see if this will do the trick. Get that all the way on. So it looks like CO2 did the job. Let's see if we can't finish it off here. Most of the tire is set. Just gonna pump it up so you don't hear any more of those loud, scary snaps. So now I've got it up to about 40 psi. I'm gonna take the pump off. Close this up. The one thing you want to check for is you want to make sure that the tire you can actually see that little line there right above the D. That's where the tire is supposed to set in place. So you want to just run around the whole tire, make sure that it's all set in place. As long as that all lines up, you should be good to go. So once you have the tire set properly, what you're going to want to do is lay it horizontal and then just rotate it around a few times. You want to make sure that you're dispensing that sealant everywhere. That way it's not going to go and deflate on you. Flip it over, do the same thing and you should be good to go. Just going to throw this back on here. All right. And there we go. Got the new Maxxis Aggressor hooked up on the Bronson. Good to go. Fresh treads. Let's get out there and ride.